Good to see you this week. Uh, my name is Joy. If you haven't seen me before, that's who I am. I live in Uganda and I'm a mom to five and have a foster son, Gift, who is right now watching some baby signing time because he's deaf. So you can see the top of his head over there. So this is my dining room. Um, I had wanted to make this video earlier. Right now, as we speak, just outside these doors, uh, I've got a painter, so I'm sure Stanley can hear me and is laughing at me right now, but hey, that's okay. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, I kind of decorated for fall, even though it's really summer here, right? But um, we were given four quail by some friends of ours, because they were leaving to go back to the States for a little while, and I just think the quail eggs are the cutest thing ever. Is that not just the cutest? It's so beautiful. It doesn't even look real. And my kids keep wanting to eat them, but I won't let them, because I think they look great. And I even found some dead leaves that fell over the neighbor from the neighbor. And they are, I think they look very fallish, don't you? So I've been pretending it's fall time. My friend Kelly even makes pumpkin spice. So I have had my pumpkin spice latte and I'm feeling pretty good. So uh, what am I wearing today? Okay, so I told you last time that my swing dress shrunk up. So I replaced it with, this is the Lands End Black dress. I think it's called the Fit and Flare dress. Um, and I think I'm wearing the same beads. Yes, Kelly gave me these beads and I'm still wearing them. But last time I was wearing the Fit and Flare dress in like the paisley print thing. And now this is just the black. So that's what I'm wearing today. Um, yeah, it's warm today. So I'm needing my shoulders free. I could throw a cardigan on, my cardigan on if I needed it, but today I'm not going to need it. So we're going to talk about homeschooling and I'm so excited. So today I'm going to talk about what we are doing for the current year, 2016, 2017. And then I'll do another video. Um, I've been compiling all your questions and I'm going to answer all those questions in just a real Q and A one by one kind of a, a thing. What you should know is I'm not an expert, but I do love homeschooling. When my son, who is now 16, when he was two, we lived in a tiny little village above the Arctic Circle as missionaries. And that was, this might sound weird to some of you, but it was in the beginning of the internet. So the internet was a new thing, and we had just gotten connected to the internet, and there were these homeschool groups, and they were talking about before five in a row, and I love books. So in my little tiny village, in the middle of nowhere, I ordered these books. Um, a lot of them were out of print, and so they came to this tiny village from all around uh, the U.S., and so I still have those books. Books like Jenny's Surprise Summer and Corduroy and A Pocket for Corduroy and just all of those books that I love so much. So I really started homeschooling, if you will, when he was two, and then I officially started doing kindergarten and then have homeschooled someone from then until now. Now he's a sophomore in high school. So my older two, I have five kids, less gifty over there, oh, he's watching this, um, who is our foster son right now. Um, the two oldest, Britton is 16 and Hannah is 14. Hannah was homeschooled until last year and Britton was homeschooled until two years ago. Britton's in 10th grade and Hannah's in 9th grade and they go to a really sweet international Christian school here that I just adore. Um, and I'm actually gonna link, the teachers made this really cute video um, of, of the school and I'll just link that below in case you wanna see the kind of school that they go to. But they have Congolese teachers, Ugandan teachers, there's a, a teacher from France, there's um, teachers from all around the world, Canada, America, um, and it's just a really special place they have mostly Ugandan classmates and then some American, some British, some Korean, different things like that. So it's been a really good experience for them. I've been sad not to have Hannah at home with me this year as it's my first year not having her, but um, they are really thriving in their environment. So let's talk homeschool. This is what we're doing this year. Me and the boys. So I have three boys at home. Hudson is currently in seventh grade. And the twins are currently in fourth grade, Tanner and Tyler, and they're nine. So what we are using, we use, in the mornings, we use Classical Conversation Cycle 3 app. It's on the iPad, and it's all we do is repeat the history cycle. We're not using Classical Conversations, but I do like that because it coincides really well with our history that we're studying. And so it's just a memorization tool that we use each morning. 
we are using Sunlight Core D for the fourth grade, which includes the readers, read alouds, Bible and memorization, poetry and science is included in that. And I have used this core, I don't always use Sunlight, um, I've used this core, this will be the third time I've used it, and I love the read alouds and the readers include in, included in this one and in next year's. So this is Sunlight Core D, so it's early, oops, sorry, early American history. So we started with Columbus, we're studying the Incans, the Mayans, the Aztecs right now. We're also studying early America, we're reading the Witch of Blackbird Pond right now, and I'm just loving it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So each day... Um, if you're familiar with sunlight, it's really simple. It's got kind of what you're to do each day, and then I just mark it off as we do it. And then for the extra things, I have just um, a simple list of the things that we need to do each day, and I'll run through those right now. Um, so then I can just mark them off as we do them. So the things that we do for math, we're using horizons for fourth grade. For science, that um, goes along with sunlight. Reading is also sunlight, which their readers just are incredible because they go right along with our history and I'm loving it. I love it, love it, love it. Spelling is a new thing this year. We're using spelling UC. And we're using the number, uh, number, I can almost go, um, letter D, which is Americana. And so each week, it's kind of a, it's sort of a mix of classical and Charlotte Mason. Um, and each week they have a passage to copy and then go over some vowel chunks and then I dictate to them. But it's each, each week it's about the Pilgrims and Thomas Jefferson and Louisiana Purchase. So it's going right along with our history as well, which I really enjoy. And then we're using um, Writing with Ease, which I didn't bring that book in here. Writing with Ease um, for just some writing. Uh, I don't focus on it too heavily, even in fourth grade, if you can believe it. But um, I start to hit it harder in fifth grade. For handwriting, we're using Reason for Handwriting, um, Cursive D, and uh, that goes into their notebook. And let me just show you quickly. Um, this will also show you about what, we're do what we do for map or geography. So I learned this from Leah Bowden. If you don't follow her, I know she did Periscope. I'm pretty sure she's on YouTube. And I know she has a Facebook page, but seriously, follow her because she's amazing. She's a Charlotte Mason homeschooler. But um, she recommended just getting the con start with a continent. So you've got a full one and then a blank one, a blank continent. And I got these from Super Teacher Workshops Worksheets.com. And the, each day, they all they do is they copy two from from the printed one onto the to the clear one, and they go back and forth. Hey, buddy, I'm making a video. Um, and then so each day, just two. Just two, each day, each day, each day. So they're looking at the full one and they're filling in the empty one each day. And I have been amazed at how much my fourth graders have remembered. They took their test on South America just the other day and they knew all of them. They couldn't spell French, French Guyana and uh, there was another one, that Galapagos, that they couldn't spell from memory, but how they remembered all of them, I was really impressed. And so then also, their uh, handwriting goes in here, and then any of the narration and dictations that we have from writing with ease. So that's kind of what this is for, their notebook. Then I also have them do extra math on the computer. It's an online free, um, just basically rote memory, timed, fill in the blank for your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All my other kids did it and they graduated from it. It seemed to really help them with their recall. Um, and so I just have them do that in between, you know, when I'm working with other kids. We also do French and they are, we're doing uh, Learn French with Alexa. We're gonna, um, and Duolingo, Hudson uses more of that on the iPad and Rosetta Stone. So, and um, yeah. So that's what we use for fourth grade. Now for seventh grade, this is something that I hadn't tried before, but I'm really loving it. And I think you're loving it too. Are you loving it, Hudson? Mm -hmm. He says yes, so good thing. 
Good thing you said that. Good job. Thanks for saying that. Um, Timberdoodle has kits, curriculum kits, and I was always a bit skeptical because I tend towards the Charlotte Mason kind of homeschooling. This turns out to be exactly what my seventh grade technical boy needs. It has all the goodness, honestly, um, of the, it has good grammar, writing, math, all of the things that are included. Now I will say this, I traded out, they use mystery of history, and I traded out because I knew that I wanted Hudson to be using this. Um, beautiful feet books for history. It's early American and world history. And actually so far it has gone exactly right with our sunlight. So he's doing the same kind of things in more depth. Um, and he loves the Genevieve Foster books. And so he, he was really excited that this has four, is that four? Four, four Genevieve Foster books. Um, and then some other books as well. To go with it and so it's got a mixture of writing answering questions essays all these different things so i'm really glad that we switched that just the history and then for the math he was already using teaching textbooks but they had recommended math seven he's in math pre-algebra so we just switched that up and um, but it has cool things to add on like laser maze and extreme dot to dot for geography and just some really cool things that he's enjoying um, and I forgot to bring it in, but each week I just put on a piece of paper how many of each thing he has to complete. And he's been really diligent. He likes to do a lot of it early in the week and then have less to do on the weekends. It also uses um, Apology of Science, which I really like. And so he's able to do a lot of that on his own and then I'm able to help him. It also has some chemistry. Oh, he's doing it right now even out on the veranda. So that is what we're using. So let me explain a little bit oh yeah and the other thing that the teaching textbooks has is it comes with computer programming now we didn't realize but we have to order in May and you don't get it until the fall we didn't realize that it was only for Windows and not Mac and we are Mac people so he's trying to find a computer programming website or course that he can take because he really likes that kind of thing so if you have any ideas feel free to leave it down in the comments below so what do we do in the mornings um, in the mornings, I drive my older two to school along with some other kids. So Hudson, excuse me, gets up and does his math. And then the twins will do their handwriting and their math work while I'm taking the kids to school. And when I get back, I usually like to drink whatever's left of my lukewarm coffee, heat it up, and then drink that. And then we start school about 8.30. And we start each time with morning time. So typically what I'm using is Hudson's joining with us for the sunlight read aloud um, there's a history book there's memorization there's poetry there's bible and then we also do his fallacy detective from his school work in that time in the morning so we do that all together and our french and french all together and then hudson kind of goes off and starts working and then he comes and asks me as needed and then i do math with the twins right here um, and then spelling, writing, and all the other things. And then we go back to the couch for science, um, and then they each read aloud to me. So that's kind of how it goes. Then we have lunch, and right now we're kind of on a magic school bus kick. So we're watching magic school bus while we eat lunch, and then after lunch I take a rest, and the kids um, are required to read for 20 minutes, listen to a book, why do we say book on tape, but a book on the iPad um, for 30 to 45 minutes depending and then they each get a little bit of time on the iPad to play a game. So that's what the chunk from like one to three looks like and then after three you're free to run, jump on the trampoline or whatever it is and we usually have guests coming in, neighbors come to play or whatever. So that's what our day looks like. I'm trying to think if there's anything I forgot. Is there anything I forgot Hudson? Okay, um, oh yeah, and they feed the animals and water the garden every day. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions before I do the other video, feel free to ask them. And I appreciate you coming and seeing what I've done. If you're interested in what I did last year, there's another video. I'll um, put a link here and you can go watch that. It looks different. I changed it up for this year as we've kind of had to shift a few things. But I am loving what I chose 
And the biggest thing I would say is that I keep everything really simple. As you can see, I don't have anything fancy. I don't have a computer, um, spreadsheet, or anything like that. I keep it really, really simple, and that works well for me. I try to um, use resources that are really sort of already laid out for me so that I don't have to spend a lot of time planning. Um, I love homeschooling, and if you have any questions or you're interested in homeschooling, feel free to reach out to me. There's an email button. Um, on the Facebook page. If you are on YouTube, please subscribe down below. I would love to share more videos with you and I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos and so I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!